Nine game winning streak comes to an end. Faced a, a tough Cubs pitching staff today. Justin Steele just uh, they couldn't get anything really off of him. Yeah, a couple of hard hit balls, but still one nothing. Corbett Burns pitches hard out. All that and more coming up on this edition of Lockdown Brewers. You are locked on Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Eight times in Brewer history have the Brewers got double-digit winning streaks uh, tonight. It ends at nine with a one nothing loss to the Chicago Cubs. Followed the same pattern as so many Brewer games this year, but I can't get down to these guys because they've been playing so great. They've been playing so great. Nine-game winning streak, got a four-game lead in the division, and we go on from there and still have a chance to take two or three in Chicago behind Brandon Woodruff. We're going to get to all that coming up here in a little bit. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Thank you, all you everydayers, for joining us here on Lockdown Brewers as we head to the uh, late summer months, and vacation time is winding up for some of you, getting back to work. Some of you said you you were listening to the show while taking the kids to school today. Back to that again. Um, but I pre- anytime you find a chance to tune us in, thank you. Google, Spotify, Apple. We're on all the major downloads for podcasts. And, of course, on YouTube, you can find us as well. Go to YouTube, search Brewers, and uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and you will get all of our shows right here on Lockdown Brewers. You get alerted every time as well, and I'm sure – on those podcasts and those audio podcast drops, there's an alert on there that you could drop as well. And of course, follow me on Twitter, uh, Chuck Freeman, F R E I M U N D. Yeah, I just, you know, you, I just had a feeling this was going to be a low scoring game. The Brewers had been, as we've talked, scoring five more or more runs in all nine of these wins, running up against Justin Steele. Who's now 15 and three? Corbin Burns, low scoring, fast game. Just you knew opportunities were going to be at a minimal. And the minimum amount of opportunities the Brewers had, they didn't cash in. I thought the one opportunity late in the game, Christian Yelich surprised the heck out of me by laying down a bunt down the third baseline. Obviously, surprised everybody in Wrigley Field, including the Cubs got on first base and uh the next the next batter sack fly to right center field and I thought that Yellow should have tagged there cuz I this is a major league baseball team here the Cubs and I think you know you've been in the league for 10 years now Yellow I think he knew that ball was probably going to get taken in the way it was looking cuz the ball was being held up in a whim I would like Yellow to hang on first tag go to second with his speed, I think he makes it. Instead, he tries stealing second base uh, and then gets thrown out You know, the next pitch after that pop-out. Mm, that was pretty much the ball game. Brewers went 1-2-3 in the ninth off Azalea. And that was that Justin Steele. Yeah, uh, they had a couple of opportunities against him. Not much. Uh, six innings he went. Three relievers for the Cubs uh, took them home, including Azalea, 1-2-3 in the ninth inning. Corbin Burns uh, pitched great. Um, and he didn't pitch well in his last outing, but he bounced back. And you know, I just feel like when Burns is matched up against another ace, when you get two aces, and if you're a betting man, bet the under. This was the game to bet the under. I, was, I looked at those two pitchers like under, and it went way under. All well, the Cubs scored the first inning off Burns, and that was it. Uh, it was good to see Uribe come back uh, after that horrible outing on Sunday. Brewers had the big lead, and he was throwing wild pitches. He was walking everybody, but he came back and, and had a nice bounce back tonight, so I think that was good to see him get back on. But the defense was there for the Brewers again tonight. Bryce Terang, wow. You know, they talked on the broadcast, Bill Schroeder, but, well, if that's not the best second baseman in the league, then who is, basically, he said. Uh, gold glove, well, he should win the gold glove. Yeah, he should win the gold glove. Why is he going to win the Glow Glove? Because the Gold Glove voting is screwed up. It's based on reputation. 
yeah, if Bryce Terang is the best second baseman at his position fielding wise, he should get the award. I don't want these, you know, the the reputations of some of these guys. The same guys win Gold Glove. I feel like year after year after year, and rookies don't have a shot. Bryce Terang, I'm mean, look at the plays all he made here this year. Bryce Terang should win a Gold Glove, no question about it. Gold Glover, hands down, shouldn't be any question about it. Best overall second baseman in the league. He's not defensively. He is. And he should be a gold glover. Uh, Santana did not play. Tried testing the ankle before the game, running some sprints in the outfield. Uh, was not in the lineup. Even while he was running those sprints, he was not in the lineup. Mark Canna played first base. I like that. I like Mark Canna at first base. Had a rowdy Telez. Telez pinch hit late in the game, but got to keep Canna in this lineup. He had two more hits tonight. Keep him in the lineup. I'm glad they went with uh, Canna. And, of course, with Telez, lefty versus lefty with uh, St- Justin Steele. Telez came off the bench later in the game. But I like Canna, even if it was a right-handed pitcher on the mound. I would have liked Canna playing first base. Uh, Joey Weimer, some horrible at-bats. I think we got to talk about him a little bit. We'll have to talk about him a little bit. And George Webb can rest easy, my friend. To quote a line, a line from The Sopranos, they can rest easy, my friend, as uh, you know that Brewer winning streak comes to an end. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. And are you struggling to close deals out there, you businessmen out there? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both buyer and seller at every stage especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates into comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performance, which lead to some better outcomes like more pipeline, higher win rates, larger deals. We call this deep sales. And we've built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash lockdown. LinkedIn.com slash lockdown for 60-day trial. LinkedIn Sales Navigator helps you sell like a superstar. Just go ahead and give it a try. 60-day free trial, linkedin.com slash lockdown, and get started. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Still to come, the Angels put a few players on waivers, including some familiar faces. Should we should we dip the toe in the water on a couple of these guys? We'll talk about that coming up a little bit. Uh, there was a roster spot cleared for the Milwaukee Brewers. Should we dip the toe in on a familiar face? We'll talk about Joey Weimer, and we'll talk about Wednesday's finale on afternoon game at Wrigley. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. You watching me on YouTube? I got these new glasses. I always say, you know, I don't want to go for the sophisticated look. I, you know, I don't want you all to think. You know, I don't want to. I, I don't want to come across as too studious on the air. You know, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I got these new glasses. I bought these wired ones. I've been buying them, and they kept kept on breaking. So I bought me some sturdy glasses, look like work glasses, and these are not going to break. So coming up tomorrow, one twenty with the broadcast Cubs and Brewers on Sirius XM, the SXM app. Search Brewers. You can get all one sixty two of Brewers baseball right there. And of course, I always tell you, you know, when I leave the ballpark at night, I always like to tune into those West Coast games on Sirius XM. And hear the golden tones of any ball game out on the West Coast. Doesn't matter who it is. Just a soothing ride home. Back to the estate, Lomira. Uh, listening to Sirius XM. But Brewer game, every game is on there. Sirius XM, SXM app, search Brewers. You can get all 162 of Brewers baseball. Thank you all you everydayers out there for watching us right here on YouTube. Go to Lockdown Brewers on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell. We're going to alert you every time we drop an episode here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. And, of course, on our various audio drops, Google, Spotify, Apple, we're on all of them. I list several of them 
on my Twitter account at Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. All right, so lots to get to, as I mentioned here, and we'll talk about those guys who the Brewers maybe should pick up, who the Angels put on waivers. And uh, again, with that roster spot at 39 now, what should the Brewers do about that? All that next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Your host, Chuck Freeman. Hey, everybody. The nine-game winning streak, of course, came to an end. You know, they're, they're playing a tough part of the schedule. And the, the, I think the great thing about this is the Brewers, through this nine-game march that they went on, you look at the Texas Rangers, the Minnesota Twins, two divisional leaders right there, the San Diego Padres who've got some talent are just underachieving. And you swept all three of those, those teams, or all three of those games, but you swept all three of those teams too. And then the Cubs on the first game of the series, and you know, he lost on Tuesday night, but it was a great run. It was fun to see that this team can put up some runs and create a little magic at the plate. We knew the defense and the pitching was going to be there, but that they created some offense. Now, I'll be honest with you, and I don't want to go down this road. What we saw tonight is what we saw for a lot of this season. These one nothing two to one games. They've been so great offensively. Please do not do not revert back to the Brewers that we saw in May, June, July, first part of August. We don't want to see those Brewers anymore. This Brewer baseball we've seen for the last week and a half, save Tuesday night's game. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see this leading to, you know, we're gonna we're getting to Friday. And it's like, up oh, the Brewers are on an 18 inning streak, but having not scored a run. You know, one of those deals. I don't want to see any of that. Let's just get back on the track. Woodruff on the hill coming up on uh, Wednesday afternoon. We'll talk about that coming up here in a little bit. George Webb can relax easy. Uh, for the use, those of you who are outside of Milwaukee and Wisconsin, George Webb's a, a hamburger place, breakfast place in Milwaukee. They serve the burgers. If the Brewers win 12 in a row, you get free burgers. Brewers made it to nine in a row. So this will not be the third time in Brewer history that they've uh, forced George Webb's to give away the free hamburgers and Webb's gladly will do it. Free publicity. They got some publicity off of this deal. Oh, J.R. Radcliffe, our buddy from the journal Sentinel, I believe was doing an article on that. We're going to get him on one of these next podcasts. I haven't, we haven't talked to him in a long time. We'll get him on. So the roster spot was cleared when Bennett Sousa was claimed by the Detroit Tigers. So that meant the roster was reduced one to 39. So what should the Brewers do there? Gasser, Hira seems to be the popular choice. If Hira doesn't get, if the Brewers don't add anybody off the waiver wire come Thursday, and Hira isn't added to this team, and Hira's never seen another inning with the Milwaukee Brewers, unless there's a rash of injuries. But it's it's almost now or never for Hira to get on this roster. And, and of course, the Brewers organization. They feel, obviously, he can't hit major league pitching. And his defense, his defense is just not very good. It's not been very good down in Nashville. So, for now, the 40th roster spot remains un, unclaimed by anybody. Hira and Gasser, I would say, would be the two uh, who you could watch out for. It be my leading candidates anyway, but who knows what the Brewers are thinking. Uh, the Angels put several players on waivers today. A couple of position players, outfielders, who I think who drew my eye. Hunter Renfro, who's hitting who was hitting 239 with the Angels, wasn't having a very good year. And of course, Hunter played in the Brewers last year. Randall Grychuk from Colorado. He was traded from Colorado to the Angels. And I was that was a guy who I had my eye on on the, at the trade deadline. They went out and got Canna, but I don't know. I I'd consider adding one of these guys to the 40 man. Wouldn't you? When the waiver claims, when you can make a claim coming up on Thursday, I think Thursday's the day that you could do this. If one of those guys fell to the Brewers, I, I, I reach in for one of those guys. Can never have enough outfielders. I, I, I would say yes. I, I, I dip into maybe Grychek, not Renfro, but Grychek. Renfro. How about that? The Angels gave away three players, including Elvis Pagero, and he didn't even make it the entire season with the Angels. Yeah, one of those two. I was just surprised. They, they, they waved a few pitchers as well. All right, we come back. We'll talk about 
Wednesday's matchup, an afternoon affair at Wrigley, the way it should be at Wrigley Field. Afternoon baseball at Wrigley. 120 with that first pitch on Sirius XM and the SXM app. Search Brewers. You're going to get all 162 of Brewers baseball on Sirius and Sirius XM. And the everydayers out there, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And the comments, I love the comments that you put on YouTube. Keep them coming. There's a comment section below the video that drops every day. Uh, Put your comments there. Hit me up on Twitter as well. Love to hear always from you on my Twitter account, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Okay, we return. We're going to uh, take some of your tweets next, and we'll talk about Wednesday's finale, a 120 start at Wrigley, the way baseball was invented to play at Wrigley, an afternoon 120 start. That's next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers, your host, Chuck Freeman. All right, here's what you had to say tonight. Joey Weimer. A lot of you tweeting about Joey Weimer tonight. His batting stance is his fundamentals at the plate getting worse and worse. I don't claim to be Charlie Lau when it comes to a a hitting coach for you old schoolers out there. I don't claim to be that guy. But still, I know a bad batting stance. I've played in a baseball. I know a bad batting stance when I see him. That's Joey Weimer. He looked terrible at the plate on Wednesday on Tuesday night. I don't know what they're doing with him. I don't know what their the instruction is to him, but whatever it is, it's not working. He's not listening or whatever. I don't know what it is, but Joey Weimer just doesn't look horrible at the play. I feel nothing when he comes to the plate anymore. My confidence level in him, less than zero. Let's put it that way. Um. Oh, all right. Some of your tweets. Uh, Mark Hanna. I said, I'm loving me some Mark Hanna. Brewers are leaving way too many guys on base as Austin. We need to score a run. Buck says they always struggle against this guy. It seems like he came up to the, it seems like he's done that since he's came up in the big leagues. Steel kind of emerged in 2022. He's given the Brewers fits, but he's given a lot of teams fits. Austin says Brewers leaving way too many guys on base. We need to score a run. Austin, you probably could take that tweet and you probably copied it and used it from August, early August, in July, and June, and May. It's We've been talking about it, but I'm not going to bash them today for scoring, for getting shut out, because the Brewers, again, may be so happy here in the last week and a half. The lead is down to four games. I was on the Bill Michaels show today, and he thought if they won tonight, or if they won Tuesday night and extended the six, he said, I think it's over. I told him, Bill, with all due respect, and I love me some Bill Michaels, professionally and personally, I love Bill. Uh, Bill, on a statewide network, I said, Bill, I've seen so many crazy things that happen in baseball. Leads dwindle. Teams, you get to September, and that's just a different brand of baseball. Some teams rise up. Some teams falter. It's just amazing how that happens in September. So even if they would have won tonight, Although my friend Bill Michaels would have been celebrating, I would have said, no, not yet. Even if it got up to seven, if they would have swept these next two games against the Cubs, still would have said, no, seven games, no. Hey, especially with this this bunch right here, this Brewer bunch this year, as unpredictable as they are. I mean, how about you know going through four and a half months of just doldrums and then pulling off a nine-game winning streak by doing things they hadn't done all season. So this team, I don't know. Nothing surprises me with, with these guys anymore. All right. I was reading your tweets. What else do we got here? Um, oh, the hitting coaches were being ripped on when things were going bad. How about showing them some love now that the Brewers are playing excellent team ball? I never ripped the hitting coaches at all. I'll just say that. And I, the hitting coaches and pitching coaches, I just don't go there on that. Not at all. How about Johnson when he was here, the hitting, the pitching coach for the Reds? When he was here, oh, we can't leave him go. Goes to the Reds, and the Reds got one of the worst starting rotations in baseball. Is that his fault? No. No, I think pitching coaches and hitting coaches get too much. You finish last in the league, what do you do? You hit, you fire a hitting coach. How about uh, players taking ownership, okay? No. Hitting coaches, 
pitching coaches. I've, I will never bash those guys unless they're so incompetent in their job, which I don't see. All right. Uh, a lot of you guys are on Joey Weimer trying to, you want him to change that batting stance. I'm with you on that. I am. Uh, I am. I am definitely with you on that. All right. We're going to come right back and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the pitchers coming up on Wednesday afternoon. That's next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Your host, Chuck Freeman, Brandon Woodruff coming off 11 K's on the Hill for the Brewers. 11 K's for the Brewers on last Friday night. It was against the San Diego Padres. He makes a start. And I think Woody, yeah, they were saying this on the broadcast as well. Rock was that uh, Woody, there's no pitch limit with this guy anymore. Well, there's a pitch limit for everybody, but as far as restrictions, none for Woodruff. He's free and easy and ready to go. Now, how about let's go on some runs tomorrow? All right. Kyle Hendrick, I feel like the Brewers hit Hendrick every time. I feel like every time the Brewers are playing the Chicago Cubs, they're facing this guy. I mean, why is it? Every time the Brewers are in a series, somehow, I mean, does he pitch like every three days? Because I I, I look and I'm I'm looking at the the five-man rotation. Kyle Hendricks is pitching again against the Brewers. His last three starts have been pretty good. He's five and seven. He's got an ERA just under four. Uh, Kyle Hendricks, man, like I said, feel like this guy every every series the Brewers play against him somehow. Every series they play the Brewers, it's Kyle Hendricks. They're going to wind up this series on Wednesday, and then the Phillies are in town. Off day Thursday, Phillies in town on Friday for a huge weekend series. Friday through Sunday against the Phillies. We're fighting for a wild card spot. It's going to be a great series against the Phillies. One more game. Saw a lot of Cub fans down there tonight. That was great. A lot of Cub fans. And uh, you know what? <laughs> Bottom line is the Brewers have been playing so well. They are, they've built a four-game lead in this division. It's not a big cushion by any means, but it's a little bit of a, cu- a, cu- a cushion. It's a big cushion, not a huge cushion, but a nice cushion. And they can build on it with winning a game Wednesday. And I just got my, it's in the back of my mind because I've seen this team play every game this year. And it's in the back of my mind that we're headed. They've been so good offensively that they're headed the other way offensively. I hope that's not the case. I hope I'm proven wrong. I'd like to come back here tomorrow night and talk about a Brewer baseball team that's bounced back and won the ball game, and they put up double-digit hits and scored five or six runs and beat Kyle Hendricks. I hope that's the case. I don't want this uh, because they've been so good offensively. I do not want it to go the other way, and I hope Tuesday is not an indicator of it sliding that way. And don't come at me and say, oh, Freeman, you're being negative on this. No. No, no, I'm not being negative. I'm just, that's just the Brewer fan of me, I think, talking. That's going to do it for the show today. Thank you, everybody. And, of course, the Brewers are on Lockdown Brewers, uh, are on uh, Sirius XM, the SXM app, 120 with that first pitch on Wednesday afternoon, and then they come home, play the Philadelphia Phillies. But the Brewers and Cubs tomorrow, 120 with that first pitch, and you get every game of Brewer Baseball on Sirius Sirius XM search Brewers, and there you go. And then the Phillies in town love when the Brewers are in town on Memorial Day and Labor Day weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Monday, they go to Pittsburgh for a night game on Labor Day. Usually, let's see, Labor Day that's meant for afternoon baseball, but they go to a they go to the Pirates for a night game coming up on Monday night. But got to get through this Cubs game again. The Brewers are going through a tough stretch. We'll see what they do with that roster spot that is at 39 right now with uh, Bennett Souza. Would they reach out and put a claim on Hunter Renfro and Randall Grychuk? Would they do that? I don't know. We saw some good things tonight. We saw some lack of clutch hitting, few hard hit balls, minimal opportunities, and uh, to rang with fantastic defense. But it all led to a one nothing loss against the Chicago Cubs. Thank you, everybody, and all you everydayers out there. 
for joining us on Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. We'll talk to you after Wednesday's game, everybody. We'll drop this episode on Wednesday night. Chuck Freeman on Locked On Brewers.